Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. So I'm doing a quick video on the latest release, the 0 0.10.8. There aren't a lot of updates, both because of holidays happening and the team, of course, being split between working on LogSeq as is and working on their new database branch. But let's dive into the changes that are. And then first we get to enhancements and there aren't many enhancements. So quickly show you how it looks into the change log. As you can see, enhancements and it only says languages. Now, of course, language languages are great they make Logseq more accessible to people around the world but it means I can't tell anything about it because you know I don't speak a million languages I only speak English German and Dutch and my German is wonky then we get to the fixed issues so then we get to task list toggling and initially I thought like hey what is this I can't reproduce it because I was looking into the code change and I see this set where there's like blocks here and I'm going like no like Logseq normally uses like to do so how does this work so I had to ask around on discord and luckily I got like an answer. Now I'm going to show it to you as well. You can actually make separate lists in Logseq. So when you don't want to make something like a full task, like, you know, now or later, that's like a full task. But say, for example, you have something where you want to say like, hey, but I want to make steps, but I don't want to make a full task that are like queried. What you can do is you can say like steps to get done, do shift enter, and then make a list like this, show how it's done. And that turns it into like a task. And you can make multiple multiple of course so I can go to the end here and do another shift enter another star opening a bracket and then make video and then you'll get this list and you can mark these as done or not done and if you do that and you click here you see that there's an x in it and now it works both if you're like a small x and a large x so it's no longer fully dependent on how Logseq handles it but this is of course super useful if you don't want to clutter up your queries and to do's for things that are basically just steps to get things done and I will definitely be using this in some of my videos templates where I have like a lot of steps that don't really classify as a full task but are just steps to do so that I don't forget anything awesome stuff I'm gonna get a lot of uses out of this I hope others get too then we have multi-line block exporting now what does that mean and that means that if you look into this example that I have here uh, if you had like a multi-line block like this so you have like three lines and you have like a line after it and you would export this then you wouldn't get this extra enter resulting in next line should be on next line line being behind this block now if I go here and I do like an export so let me see copy export as you can see that it's nicely fitted on the next line and that is what you would expect then we have the emoji cursor movement now if your cursor was playing like hide and seek to figure out where to be you might have been affected by this and what happened I, I looked at the set is that emojis don't start with a character they start with like a zero and a special set of string to say like which type of emoji it is and that got the cur cursor confused it thought like it was was like an empty line but it wasn't really an empty line they got it fixed so that now your cursor moves towards the right position it's very technical but if you use a lot of lines starting with emojis you'll probably see an improvement into expecting where the cursor is at Okay, so this is a small translation error on us quickly setting up these slides, but it wasn't PDF viewing, but PDF view on Linux. And that one had a bug that you can shift click and select an area. Now, how does that look? If I go to Logseq, I have this example PDF here. And if I open that, then one of the things that you can do is you can select text to put stuff. But if you put shift, then you can select the block. So for example, you can highlight this part, give it a color. And then at that point, it's a, a reference that you can use inside your notes. So you can like a copy reference and then say like hey cool highlight so and then you get like this nice screenshot as well and in linux then this didn't work so you can shift click on it and that has been fixed and then we have the page title search optimization and what that means is that looking at the code it used to be 60 characters so if you had like a title that was more than 60 characters and you were searching something after that 60 then you wouldn't get that result now one of the reasons why people do this is because there's a trade-off like if you search everything then it's going to be slow if you search too little then it's going to be fast but you don't get the results it's changed from 60 characters to 500 which i think is good because 60 characters is a bit short definitely when you're using like longer more descriptive titles for your pages so the next issue talks about the logseq sync clearing tokens and keys and why is that i had a quick look at what this was all about and diving a bit further i started it was using amazon cognito so i learned something new every day and what i learned is that logseq sync in the back and uses something called Amazon Cognito. 
window, which allows for syncing data to an S3 bucket, which is where your data is stored. And then Cognito also takes care of making sure that that stuff is encrypted so that Amazon can't read it, but you can because you use like a specific password that only you know. Of course, if you're logging out of LogSeq, you want your data to be safe. And what happened now is you would get logged out so you can no longer access the bucket. So if you would clear your tokens, that would mean that, well, people couldn't access your bucket anymore. If they had the token and they didn't have your decryption password, they could use the token to access the data and then try and decrypt it. Uh, there's like multiple layers that you go through here. Uh, it's mostly that it's good form to just clear everything. I still think that it's like a layer that feels like a lot of security, but do remember that all your files are readable markdown text files on your system. So if anybody has access to your system, they, you know, your encryption is not going to help you. People can just copy the raw files and use that and just not get any updates. So be safe, maybe put it on an encrypted folder if you care a lot about the data that is inside your notes. So then a fix for the UI button update handling. And this is part of Android. And what it means is that if you go to Loxy and you go to settings, then you check for updates and that will normally check on the site if there's a new version. Now, if you do that on Android, that doesn't work because it's super nice that it checks for a new version of the uh, Windows binary, but you want to know if there's a new APK available. And now it's been changed so that on Android, you will be sent towards the GitHub site and there you can check if you have like a new version. Now, some people might be wondering like, why are we still going towards GitHub to get an APK file? And the main reason is, is that officially Logseek is still in beta and they don't want to set it in the Play Store until it's all stable and finished, which I think is fair. It's not a huge issue, but you know, it's something to keep in mind. It will get to the Play Store eventually. It is planned. They don't know like not how to do it. They specifically decided because Logseek is still a testing app. And then we get to the shout out and thanks to all the people that helped make contribution to this release. And for this time, it is Albano Batistella. I really think people are trying to make like extra long names just to make me break my tongue during these change log videos. EZZ, Liu Chen, John Ramos, Lai Mike, Kweop, Janika. You all, thanks for contributing and making Loxy even better. So it's a short one. There weren't too many changes in this change log. Do let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you want to add on these new improvements you know do they make your life better i always want to know don't forget if you ever want to have like a quick chat with me to figure out like if your systems are working i have a free 30 minute chat that you can sign up for i got limited slots per week because i am still human and i have limited time in a week but i love hearing from people and getting their thoughts and ideas remember you're awesome keep it up